Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Coronation Street official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The goal of Toya Battersby is to reveal Rowan's true identity in tonight's 8 p.m. Coronation Street episode. See the complete listings in our TV guide. Toya tries to gather information about cult leader Rowan online, but her efforts are not fruitful. In the meantime, Rowan threatens to disclose his covert relationship with Toya and puts pressure on Nick Tilsley to contribute to the new resource center. Toya discovers Rowan's driver's license and performs a reverse image search of his photo after searching through his jacket pockets. What will Toya find out? After saying her sorry to Roy Cropper at the cafe, Lauren Bolton heads to the rivers, where Bobby Crawford extends an invitation for her to stay in his bed. But when Carla Connor learns what her nephew has done, she becomes enraged. Betsy Swain threatens to denounce Beth Tinker to her supervisor, Carla, unless she agrees to participate in her illicit activities. With nowhere else to go, Beth unwillingly teaches Betsy how to attach the fake labels to the t-shirts while she's by herself in the factory. When Bernie Winter phones Gemma Winter Brown at number five, she invites the children to stay with her while she and Chesney Brown work out their living arrangements. In another scene, Dylan Wilson is happy that Stu Carpenter would let him work a trial shift at Speed Doll. However, when Maria Connor tells him and Scene Tully that Mason has been released, Dylan's happiness quickly turns to terror. Lauren, where are you? Free Roy Cropper, exclaimed Coronation Street, eager to build excitement around what the show's executive producer claimed to be their biggest story of the year. But I was unable to follow along. In February of last year, rising actress Kate Fitton's character, Lauren Bolton, vanished, leaving behind a demolished apartment and a few bloodstains. The routine of misdirection, death threats, erroneous arrests, Bizarre coincidences and subpar police performance would recur in the months that followed. After being revealed as a far-right terrorist tool and enticing Max Turner, Patty Bever, to join the gang that carried out bombings and racist acts, Lauren was a relatively new character to the show. Following in the footsteps of show legends like Catherine Kelly's Becky, she was taken under the wing of our loving and patient cafe king Roy Cropper, David Nielsen, as with every injured waif and stray, it became evident that Lauren had a great deal of potential as a character. Kate demonstrated her abilities in the far-right grooming narrative, and it was only fitting that Corey would stand by her side. However, Lauren's history continued to haunt her, and by the time she vanished and was subsequently thought to have been murdered, her redemption story was far from over. I was excited when show producer Ian Meckley initially hinted at the year's big tale to Metro.co.uk in January. The primary selling point for me was the assurance that it will feature a variety of cast members. However, it's really hard to get these mystery hodunnets properly, or where are they's and the tale started off quite formulaically. It wasn't quite as horrible as I may be portraying it. It revisited events like Roy and Haley's decades-old kidnapping of Wayne and woven in elements like Daniel's prior accusations of inappropriate behavior with younger girls and women. I love continuity and find it annoying when significant events in a character's life are never brought up again, so this was very appreciated. The plot had talented actors like Rob Mallard, Chinik Sterling Brown, David Nielsen, and Alison King, so how could it not be strong in terms of acting? For me, though, it completely lost direction when Roy was taken into custody and accused of murder. I can see why Corey wants to bring back the free, the Weederfield one frenzy that even seized Parliament during Deirdre Ratchet's 1997 jail sentence. But this has been overdone. Over the years, we have witnessed instances identical to this with Tyrone Dobbs, Sally Metcalf, Yasmeen Nazir, Fizz Stape, and Gail Platt, standing in a courtroom accused of a crime we all know they didn't do, 
with their longtime neighbors accusing them. Because justice is usually served in soap operas, Roy was always going to get his commitments, which made the entire ordeal seem needless with a predetermined conclusion. Towards the end, Griff, Lauren's terrorist father, approached Roy with a knife. It was a race against the clock. Can Roy be freed before he is killed in light of the fresh evidence that has emerged? Of course, the answer is yes. Coronation Street was never going to kill Roy off with a stabbing in a prison. The viewer was not in danger since we all knew where it was going. I had lost interest in the story because it was difficult to care about a character I hardly knew. It was hard to believe that a man would be arrested for a murder in the absence of a body and skin evidence, and the most tense scenes lacked the sense of real danger. I did lemon at the time that it occupied so much space, with only other darker tales serving as a buffer. It seems like I'm really difficult to please. Corey has pulled off the inconceivable in the previous week, which has me utterly engrossed and on the edge of my seat again. Lauren confronted her assailant Joel Deering, Callum Lil, during an hour-long two-hander, which is very unprecedented. In these episodes, Callum truly shone as Joel, a fascinating character with deep, dark depths, despite his outward attractiveness. He was terrifying and insane in the part. Instead than being a mustache-twirling bad guy, he is a highly scary antagonist who is eerily realistic. Kate and Callum's chemistry is electric, and the script and direction created a wonderfully compelling and uneasy environment. The fact that these were essentially their first scenes together made it even more amazing. Flashbacks illuminated Joel's capabilities and his own delusional assumption that he has done nothing wrong while simultaneously depicting the actual events as they transpired over the previous few months. The plot deserved this complexity, and I can't wait to see what happens next. Recently, Callum expressed his desire for the story to go on for a long time, and this time, I agree, since I'm interested to see how this man handles his future now that we have all the details. Learning about Joel sooner would have been the key to me joining the storyline much, much earlier. The plot didn't need such a drawn-out false allegation and where is she narrative. A lot of people have proclaimed this episode to be the finest of the year, which proves that any soap opera can save a plot, even if, like me, viewers thought it was lost. This is long overdue, but it's a clear victory for Corey and for me. A special episode of Coronation Street honoring Paul Foreman as he and Billy Mayhew make the most of their remaining time together has been revealed. Since learning that he had motor neurone disease last year, fans of the ITV soap opera are aware of Paul's declining health. In April 2023, the ex-builder was informed of the life-shortening condition, which causes messages from the motor neurons to eventually stop reaching the muscles. Unfortunately, there isn't a treatment at this time. So as the months have passed, Paul's health has deteriorated in front of his family. Many of the scenes in which Paul's husband, Billy Mayhew, learned that Paul had been covertly preparing to take matters into his own hands and determine when his life would end as his symptoms from the life-limiting illness worsen have left viewers with tears in their eyes. Paul has gradually lost the capacity to utilize his limbs in the last few weeks and months, and this has also affected his speech. The terrible idea of being unable to leave his and Billy's apartment when using the stair lift became dangerous also occurred to him. Spoilers now indicate that Corey will honor Paul, played by Peter Ash, and Billy, played by Daniel Brocklebank, with a whole episode on Friday, July 26th. Billy first summons the family to a meeting at No. 5, where Paul plays them a taped message informing Billy that he is dying, that he can no longer handle battling, and that he needs Bernie Winter, his mother, more than anything right now. Then in the episode that is only devoted to Paul's story, he wakes up to find that his speech has significantly deteriorated 
but is resolved to make the most of his final day of freedom from the apartment after learning that he is no longer able to use the stair lift. It's safe to say that Paul and Billy's day together is an emotional roller coaster as they spend it doing the things that Paul loves and wants to do while he still has the ability. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.